Here's another good Mac Mini hub for certain people. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So today what I want to do is I just want to set the video up because this is important. I get a ton of comments on this. What I have is I have a Satachi hub right here for your, for your Mac Mini, right? Works with the M1 Mac Mini, the M2 Mac Mini. And I'm going to show you how this works. Now before I get into the video though, I want to kind of stop all the comments in advance. I always get comments like, oh, that's not Thunderbolt. That's way too slow. It's too slow of storage. Um, you know, it's not using, why would I give up a Thunderbolt port for that and all this other stuff, right? I want to just say, if it's not for you, don't watch the video. But for the people that want a, a hub just like this that actually has internal storage that you can add to it, which is going to give you incredibly cheap storage, and I'm going to show you some examples, this might be a good option for you. So definitely stay tuned if you want to watch that. Again, this may not be for everybody, but it's going to be for a lot of people that just want that cheap storage, and they also want some ports on the front of it, on the front of their Mac Mini. So stay tuned. Without further ado, we'll get into it. All right, and then just let me just set up the video. So in this video, I'm going to show you the ports of this up close and show you what it includes, how it connects into the Mac Mini. I'm also going to show you the storage on the back, how you actually install that storage, what kind of drives it takes, how fast that storage is. I'm going to do a speed test on that as well. And then basically, what else do I have? I'm going to show you some good options for SSDs to put into there and just show you how fast like a file will transfer just to kind of show you, like, do you really need super fast storage or is this fast enough? So we're going to go through all that in this video. So sit back, relax. If you're looking for a hub for your Mac Mini, you might consider this one. I'll have links to all this, including all the drives and everything, in the video description. All right, let's just start off by saying, first of all, this thing actually, it's, it's very similar. Now, just full disclosure, this is an older, this is an older Mac Mini here. This one doesn't actually work with this. My, my M2 is downstairs, and I don't feel like reconfiguring it. Kind of lazy, and I actually do this as a hobby, so. But this works the same, basically, just to show you the example here. So basically, an M2 or M1 Mac Mini would seed right into this thing, just like this. It's actually kind of carved out, and there's a little kind of a, I guess it's little fans and stuff in there, but basically the bottom of your Mac Mini seeds right into this hub. And and the color is very close to my new one. And this one, this is more of a weathered one here, so it's going to be a little bit off. But on my other one downstairs, it's very close. So, And I did all my testing on my M2 Mac Mini, just to let you know, full disclosure. On the back of it, there's a USB-C cable. And I'll show you some close-ups of that as I talk. But that basically flips right into your Mac Mini. And that takes up, basically, on your M2, it'll go into one of the Thunderbolt ports, right? So what are you getting from that? So obviously, let me just set up a couple things here. If, if you actually, let me just take that off really quick. I'll show you close-ups as I'm talking too. So first of all, this is aluminum on the outside, plastic on the top and bottom. And, and let me just go through the ports here. It's got a micro SD reader and just an SD card reader right here. It's got an audio jack. I think it's a three and a half millimeter audio jack. It's got three, let me just see here, USB-A data ports, one USB-C data port on the front there. Now these are all only gonna be five gigabits per second. So again, they're not Thunderbolt speed and not even 10 gigabits per second, but they're five um, gigabits per second on the front. So keep that in mind as well. Um, on the bottom, I'll show you close-ups though. On the very bottom of it, you can open up this little compartment and I actually have a drive in there. I'll show you in a second what that is. But basically you can put in a SATA drive. Now that's a SATA M.2 drive. A lot of people, again, are going to say, well, that's not NVMe. It isn't. It's only SATA. you got to make sure M.2 SATA, M.2 NVMe will not work in this, but the SATA will. You're going to get fast enough speeds. I'm going to prove that to you in a second. So that's what you're getting here. And a lot of people complain, like, why would I give up a Thunderbolt port for this? And, you know, here's this connection i got to plug into my Mac Mini. Well, let me just tell you something. If you needed a SD card reader, for example, you'd have to plug in a hub anyway, right? And that's just one port. So you can always take this out, plug it in, take it out, plug it in as you need this. It's going to give you those ports on the front and the SD card readers, which is key right there, and the storage. So again, you can take this out anytime you want and use that Thunderbolt port with another hub or however you want to use it because you only got two of them. But if you want to use it, let's say you're going to be doing some work where you need the SD card reader or you want that extra storage, just plug it back in. It's that easy, right? You don't have to, it's not life, it's not gluing it into the, into the Mac Mini, you're just plugging it in. So for most people, it's going to be fine. All right, so the, the main reason you'd pick this up again is because it's got super incredibly cheap storage. Let me, let me just show you an example. I bought this, it's a Silicon Power. I'll have a link to this, I'll show you on my Amazon page here. It was $25 for 500 gigabytes. $25 for 500 gigabytes, all right? Then you gotta buy this right here. So, and this is gonna be about, I forgot to say the cost of it by Satachi, but this is gonna be about 80 bucks. 
All right, let's do a speed test now just to show you. So the drive I put in here again is a Silicon Power one, and I'm gonna show you after this exactly what that was and how to get really cheap storage way beyond this. So let's go ahead and take a look at my screen though. We're gonna run the speed test on this, and you're gonna notice pretty quickly that right away, you're not getting the fastest. It's gonna be about, I was getting around 340 on the writes, 340 megabytes per second, and about 335 megabytes per second on the reads right there. So again, that's not gonna be the fastest, right? But how fast does that mean? So how fast do you need? Let me tell you a quick story. I have a 2017 iMac over there that boots off of a Samsung QVL uh, normal SS two and a half inch drive. I think I get like 400 megabytes per second. I've done 500 4K video editing on there. 500 videos, 4K editing. I also transfer files. I can't even notice a hitch or anything like that. So this is not the fastest, of course, but it's fast enough for most people. Let me just prove that to you. Over here, you're gonna see me moving. It's gonna be a one gigabyte file. Take a look at my screen. And you can see how fast this is. I mean, moving that one gig file, it takes literally, what is it, one or two seconds to go ahead and complete the, the you know, a gigabyte file over to that drive. So this is what I'm talking about. Everyday use of just storing files for people, storing your photos. Um, not so much, you don't have to be an expert video editor to use this. If you are, then you wanna definitely spend some money on faster storage. But for most people, you can even put apps on this, I've done that, you can do anything you want. This is gonna be fast enough for most people. All right, so the drive that I put in this thing right off the bat, it's gonna be basically, it's a Silicon Power 512 gigabyte like I told you. It was only 25 or 26 bucks. This thing right here is only about $80, $79.99 right now. So for 106 bucks, you can add 500 gigs of just cheap storage fast enough to your Mac mini, right? Well, you can get 500 gigs on, directly through Apple for about 200, so that's not a huge, about a $100 difference, still substantial, but not maybe the biggest. But let's keep moving. So let's just assume that you put a one terabyte SATA drive into this thing right here, one terabyte. Here's one by 11. These are fairly cheap. They're very, you know, I, I've used them all the time. I've never had an issue with them. I'll put links to all this in the description. But here's the JM600. Again, it's a one terabyte drive. $43.99, so if you do the math on that, basically it's gonna cost you 124 bucks for one terabyte. 124 bucks, that's this, the drive, plus the, 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 same, or the uh, switch down here, the hub, and then basically for Apple, they would charge 400 for that same storage, right? If we keep moving down, this is where it gets even huge. Here's one for 89 bucks from Levin. Again, it's a SATA M.2, that's about 90 bucks. This is again about 80 bucks, that's $170. Apple would charge you 800. So 170 versus 800 dollars. You can buy a brand. You can buy a brand new M2, another system for your wife or for your family or whatever, for less cost than actually just upgrading the storage or the difference in that storage right there. So if you don't need that speed, why get it, right? You can use something like this. Do most of your file transfers and stuff that you don't need super high speed on, and this thing just works incredibly. All right, so let's wrap this video up. I just wanna make sure everyone understands who this is for. Yes, it's a little bit older technology because obviously it has um, you know, only five gigabit per second ports on the front, what have you, but who is this for? It's somebody that has either an M1 or M2 Mac Mini with this kind of USB-C connection on the back. You need that. It will not work with the really old um, systems, just like the example I have there, but it won't work with the old ones. So it gives you, though, if you need the card readers, it has that on the front, and then it gives you additional ports, right? But it also gives you that storage. So if you need fairly just, just normal speed storage, nothing crazy, but a ton of it for, like you said, 170 bucks for two additional terabytes versus 800, this is for you. Everything's worked fine for me. This is not a total review because I haven't had it long enough. Um, one last thing too is I did try like plugging in additional storage to the front of this and just to kind of make sure this works and it does. I use like a little USB drive here so that worked perfectly on the ports. It does say though, just one disclaimer at the very end, that these are not for charging up here, um, but it does work with additional hard drives. I've tried keyboards, stuff like that, it worked just fine for, but you don't wanna use these ports for charging. I just wanted to throw that in at the very end because that's what the system says and when I read it online. I haven't really tried to you know, charge anything with it, but just, just keep that in mind when you're buying it. Anyways, we'll talk to you soon. I hope you guys love these videos and subscribe if you can, it helps me a ton. Trust me, I'm trying to grow the channel. And uh, yeah, you can see I like to do a little bit smaller products, not what all the big guys do. We'll see you in a little bit. Peace.